and eat it too. And by cake, we mean furniture. Bob's Discount Furniture. It's how to win at Furniture. Good morning, America. New this morning, clarifying his comments. President Trump explaining whether he believes Russian President Vladimir Putin or America's intelligence agencies who say Russia meddled in our presidential election. I'm with our agencies, especially as currently constituted with their leadership. Plus the war of words ramping up this morning with North Korea. Breaking overnight, gym accident. Nearly two dozen children hurt when a platform collapses. Kids sent tumbling. It was really scary and oh, everybody yeah. was um, crying and bleeding. Ambulances rushing to the scene to treat the injured. The question this morning, how did it happen? Not on camera, look at this wild boat crash. Oh, oh, oh! oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. The two racers colliding, one going airborne in front of a horrified crowd. Everyone was in disbelief that it even happened. How everyone managed to make it out of this alive. And football fumble. The decision to hold games on Thursdays criticized by players after a blitz of injuries. I feel like Thursday night games put people in harm and when their body's not prepared. Is the schedule too grueling on the gridiron? Live from ABC News in New York, this is Good Morning America. Hey, good morning, everybody. Paula's up, but we've brought in a ringer. Her name is Sarah Haynes. Good morning, my friend. How are you yes. doing? I wrote that line. You she did. She <laughs> told me to say that. Yep. A that's lot of how, people happy to see you. That's how it's going to go this morning. Uh, let's get right to the news, though, and we begin with President Trump overseas. Shortly before we came on the air, the president tweeted out this picture of Air Force One after touching down in the Philippines. Before his arrival, protesters swarmed the U.S. Embassy and were repelled with water cannons. Quite a scene there. While in the Philippines, Trump is going to meet with the controversial president, Rodrigo Duterte, who is accused of ordering illegal killings in that country's drug war. Trump has told Duterte he's doing, quote, an unbelievable job on the drug problem. The upcoming meeting comes on the heels of Trump walking back comments in which he seemed to side with Vladimir Putin over America's intelligence agencies about the question of Russian Russia meddling in our elections. It also comes after President Trump ramped up his war of words with Kim Jong-un of North Korea, calling him short and fat. ABC's chief White House uh, correspondent, John Carl, is traveling with the president this morning. John, good morning to you. Good morning, Dan, and good morning, Sarah. After saying just yesterday that the president, that he thinks that Vladimir Putin truly believes it when he denies that Russia interfered in the election, today the president said that he accepts the findings of U.S. intelligence agencies which have concluded that Russia did meddle and that it was Vladimir Putin who ordered it. At a joint press conference with the president of Vietnam, President Trump was asked point blank who he believes. U.S. intelligence agencies who say Russia meddled in the 2016 election or Vladimir Putin who denies it happened. I believe that he feels that he and Russia did not meddle in the election. As to whether I believe it or not, I'm with our agencies, especially as currently constituted with their leadership. The current leadership of the U.S. intelligence agencies have said definitively that Russia did interfere and that Putin himself ordered it. The president says he accepts their findings, but he wants to move on and work with Putin rather than punish him. What he believes is what he believes. What I believe is that we have to get to work, and I think everybody understood this that heard the answer. We have to get to work to solve Syria, to solve North Korea, to solve Ukraine, to solve terrorism. And, you know, people don't realize Russia has been very, very heavily sanctioned. Just yesterday on Air Force One, the president said he briefly discussed election meddling with Putin yesterday at a multinational summit here in well, Vietnam. You. Every time he sees me, he says, I didn't do that, the president said. And I really believe that when he tells me that, he means it. That didn't sit well with Senator John McCain, who responded, quote, there is nothing America first about taking the word of a KGB colonel over that of the American intelligence community. On Twitter, the president defended his comments. When will all the haters and fools out there realize that having a good relationship with Russia is a good thing, not a bad thing? From here in Vietnam, the president also tweeted about North Korea, taunting dictator Kim Jong-un, saying, why would Kim Jong-un insult me by calling me old when I would never call him short and fat? Oh well, I try so hard to be his friend, and maybe someday that will happen. 
The president was asked if he really meant that. Could he become, quote, a friend of Kim Jong-un? That might be a strange thing to happen, but it's certainly a possibility. If that did happen, it would be a good thing for, I can tell you, for North Korea. But it would also be good for lots of other places, and it would be good for the world. So uh, certainly it is something that could happen. I don't know that it will, but it would be very, very nice if it did. The president also had some choice words for those who were the top three intelligence officials when he became president, calling the former heads of the FBI, the DNI, and the CIA, quote, political hacks. Now, these are individuals who have long careers in national security and have served both Democratic and Republican administrations. Sarah, Dan. Thank you, John. Now, moving on to the other major political story this morning, Republican Senate, Senate candidate Roy Moore taking aim at the women accusing him of sexual misconduct. Moore is stepping up his defense and refusing to drop out of the race. And ABC Stephanie Ramos is on the story from our Washington bureau. Stephanie, good morning to you. Dan and Sarah, good morning. Roy Moore, in front of his supporters in Alabama Saturday, continued to deny the accusations against him, insinuating it's a conspiracy by Democrats and the Republican establishment right here in Washington to get him out of the race. Why now? That's the question Republican Senate candidate Roy Moore continues to ask and answer. To think that grown women would wait 40 years to come before right before an election to bring charges is absolutely unbelievable. Moore going on the offensive Saturday at a Veterans Day event in Alabama on the sexual misconduct accusations made against him. To be attacked for allegations of sexual misconduct contradicts my entire career in law. I have not been guilty of sexual misconduct with anyone. Moore, who is running to fill the Alabama seat left open by Attorney General Jeff Sessions, faces allegations first reported in the Washington Post that he engaged in sexual activity with a 14-year-old girl when he was 32. The article alleges Moore also pursued other girls, including Gloria Deason, when they were between the ages of 16 and 18. While Moore finds the timing of this report suspicious, Deason's lawyer provides this answer on Facebook. As young teenage girls in the late 1970s in a small rural southern town, they had no way of knowing their rights, especially against him, considering that he was a district attorney at the time. Moore says the article is a desperate attempt to stop his campaign. This article is a prime example of fake news. But a number of Republican senators are distancing themselves from Moore. At least 42 out of the 52 GOP senators have weighed in on Moore's situation. Most saying if the allegations are true, then he should drop out of the race. Moore's Democratic opponent, Doug Jones, says Moore needs to answer to the people of Alabama and calls these allegations very serious, adding that he needs to do more than just simply deny them. Dan, Sarah. It's a tight race. Stephanie, thank you very much. Let's bring in ABC News Chief Global Affairs Correspondent Martha Raditz, who will be hosting this week later this morning from D.C. Martha, good morning. Good morning, Dan and Sarah. So you've been out on the road, and you spoke with the governor of Ohio, John Kasich, as well as voters in both Ohio and Pennsylvania. Are they following this Moore story, and what do they have to say about it? Well, they're, they're seem to be definitely following this story, and frankly, they kind of follow what what Roy Moore says in some cases. The Trump voters will say, look, uh, if he did this, it, it, it's bad, but we don't really know whether he did this. I mean, there were some that who were more definitive about it, saying he should go. But I think generally you hear, you know, we don't know, and it was 40 years ago, sort of the things that Roy Moore was saying, there, that if, if he did that. And, and I don't know really how you take this further. You've got four women on the record who the Washington Post sought out. They didn't come to the Washington Post and, and 30 others who they talked to. So I don't really know what those voters are waiting for. And Martha, President Trump says he believes Putin's sincerity and the intelligence community on Russian interference. Can he have it both ways? Kind of a contradiction there, isn't it, Sarah? Uh, I mean, can he have it both ways? He said one thing. Uh, yesterday, and he said another thing overnight. He basically said he trusted his intelligence communities, and the intelligence communities, as John Carl pointed out, said Putin was behind this interference. So I don't know how President Trump says, 
I believe he means it, and then on the other hand, say, I believe the intelligence community, but clearly he was trying to correct that in some way, it seems, saying he is siding with the intelligence community. This, of course, came after uh, Mike Pompeo, the CIA director, his CIA director, issued an unusual statement saying, I back my intelligence communities, basically, no matter what the president is saying. Tricky issue for the president, no question about it. Martha, thank you very much. I want to remind everybody, Martha's got uh, a big show this morning coming up on this week. She's going to have more on the political fallout in Alabama with the Senate race there. And she'll speak with Counselor to the President Kellyanne Conway and Ohio Governor John Kasich, who's called for Roy Moore to step aside. That's coming up on this week. Thank you. We move on to a breaking story. Overnight, nearly two dozen children are recovering this morning after being injured in a gym accident. Authorities say the kids went tumbling when a structure collapsed. Ambulances rushed to the scene, and ABC's Marcy Gonzalez is on the story from our L.A. Bureau. Marcy, good morning. Dan and Sarah, good morning. We're told none of the injuries are life-threatening, but at least 21 children and two adults were hurt in that collapse. Right now, investigators are trying to figure out what caused what witnesses describe as a terrifying freak accident. Overnight chaos at a children's trampoline and obstacle gym in San Diego. Farewell collapse on some juveniles. Kids rushed out on stretchers and into ambulances. Inside, first responders treating some of the 23 people injured when a platform collapsed. It was really scary and oh, yeah. everybody was um, crying and bleeding. It happened around 7.40 p.m. 30 to 40 kids rushing up the stairs for pizza, according to some reports, caused the wooden platform to buckle. I kind of just heard like a crack. And then, all, and then all of a sudden it just crashed down and the hired people like screaming when it was coming down. The platform that these kids were going up on was real sketchy. You could tell it was not going to hold all that weight. Authorities say the injuries range from mild to moderate, also including a spine and head injury. 13-year-old Jordan Alvarez knows just how fortunate he was. I fell. Luckily, I landed on a cushion, like a, a pad, and luckily I didn't get hurt. And the gym's owner released a statement saying, quote, we are truly heartbroken. We are working with authorities and will continue to do so to resolve this. Dan, Sarah. Thank you, Marcy. Now let's go to Ron with the rest of the day's headlines. Sarah, good morning to you. Dan, Adrian. <laughs> Adrian, what happened to you? What happened to you? Wow, that's weird. Might have some sports uh, ahead of us. Robert, it's high depth, Good morning Robert. to you. <laughs> and we're going to begin in Puerto Rico with the uh, Army general in charge of the military's response there saying that their job in Puerto Rico is done. Nearly two months after Hurricane Maria devastated the island, the military says its mission of clearing roads, aiding with medical emergencies, and helping restore communications is now complete. The National Guard and FEMA will continue recovery efforts there. This comes as a new head of Puerto Rico's emergency management agency takes office after the former manager, now former manager, resigned on Friday. More than 50% of the island is still without power. In China, ESPN is reporting that uh, the three UCLA men's basketball players accused of shoplifting did not return home to Los Angeles with their team and said they will remain another week, possibly two weeks. In China, where they still face charges, freshman uh, D'Angelo Ball, Cody Riley, and Jalen Hill have been accused of stealing sunglasses from a Louis Vuitton store. Uh, the Bruins were in China to play their uh, season opener against Georgia Tech. The three players missed that game. And back in the U.S., police in Florida arrested Kansas City Chiefs defensive tackle Roy Miller in Jacksonville, Florida, on a domestic battery charge. This happened early Saturday morning. The 30-year-old was released after appearing before a judge. He is due back in court uh, later this month. The chief spokesman said that the team is aware of the incident but has no further comment at this time. And a day of prayer in Texas as the First Baptist Church in Southern Link Springs uh, will hold services for the first time since that deadly mass shooting that left 26 dead a week ago today. Uh, the service moved to a local baseball park to accommodate the hundreds expected to attend. The church also holding a memorial this afternoon to let people pay their respects. Also in Texas, in Beaumont, a huge fire racing through an apartment complex. A mother seen running out of the building. You see her there holding to her two, two children. The, the fire department says uh, there were a few minor injuries, but more than 50 homes were damaged. And finally, a family in Monrovia, California, waking up to find some visitors making themselves uh, comfortable in their home. The visitors, a bear cub, 
uh, managing to squeeze through a sliding door to get to the oh, cat food. That's yeah. the cub? Uh, well, <laughs> well, I, yeah. And well, another cub waited outside, uh, not the first time that they visited at home. The trio also caught on camera bathing in their swimming pool. It's like a I reverse Goldilocks. <laughs> not yeah. sure how you get them out <laughs> when they're in your swimming pool. I Maybe love it. cat food, I guess. With yeah. cubs, you never go near them because yeah. that's so dangerous. Yes. Yeah. Give them the cat food, let them swim. Throw it out mm -hmm. the window, lock the window. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bear safety. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> it. Uh, we're going to explain now why Tony is here. Yeah, this is NFL Sunday, and there are some calls on this Sunday morning from some of the players to put an end to Thursday night football. Eight players got hurt just this past Thursday, including Seattle, Seattle Seahawks star Richard Sherman. Sherman wrote an article called Why I Hate Thursday Night Football, calling the league hypocritical for preaching safety, but then asking for players to play games on only three days rest. Other players echoing that sentiment this week. Well, injuries are a part of the game, but um, Thursday night game, I feel like Thursday night games put people in harm and when their body's not prepared. So to lose a player of his magnitude and his caliber is just, uh, it's, a, it's, it's tragic. All right, so let's bring in Tony. Uh, do you think Thursday Night Football is going away? Well, the current contract for Thursday Night Football expires at the end of this season. That contract was for $900 million Ooh. for two years. So that's one reason why you would imagine it's not going away. The ratings relatively are still good enough. And the quality of play, maybe you can question whether it's good. But you can argue the teams are making money off this. The players are making money off of this. And there's a current state in the NFL now with player suspensions. We just talked about it with Ron. That, yeah. That's what that's looking like. Player protests. And the commissioner, Roger Goodell, is in his own contract negotiation. That's tense right now. But if the players think it's unsafe and, and they're at risk and they're all getting injured, doesn't the NFL have to do something? That about it? is the dilemma. It's a great question, Sarah. Three days rest. How does your body recover after three days rest? How does your body recover after seven days rest? Yeah. It's my opinion that if you took all the players injured in the NFL right now, put them on one team, that team would win the Super Bowl by 40 points. Oh but we're God. talking about Aaron <laughs> Rodgers and, and JJ Watt. We're talking about the best players in the league. But there is one other thing from Thursday night's game I, I want to show you. It's Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson. This is another issue for the league. We're just compounding oh. issues here. He took a hit to the, to the chin and was told by the referee as his league protocol to go to the concussion tent and take a test. Mm -hmm. Video showed him in that tent for fewer than five seconds with nobody else in the tent. Wait, he yeah. decided he not to get <laughs> yeah. a test and went back out on the field. That's going to be reviewed by the league as well. So the league's got a lot to look at here. Um, and I would expect the fine coming Seahawks way. What are the, what's the league saying about Thursday night? The league is saying that it's still quality play for them, and it is, and the ratings, I'm sure, are, are where they kind of want them to be, and the teams are happy to play in these games. But do injuries affect ratings? So if, if the great, the best players are out... When the out, biggest stars are out, I think yeah. that's what the league is most concerned about as far as ratings. Player protests, there's an argument either way. Suspension's an argument either way. But injuries to the biggest star, Aaron Rodgers, these are the guys in yeah. commercials, yeah. Odell Beckham mm -hmm. and Richard Sherman as well. Tony I, Reale, always such a pleasure to have quickly, you. But uh, quickly, college yeah. football. Yeah. Yeah. Huge oh, yeah. shake-up yesterday. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> two of the top <laughs> yes. three teams in the nation go down yesterday. Alabama, yeah. number one. Yeah. <laughs> or number two in one poll, number one in the other. Barely held on. So we're going to see a big shake-up. Miami is back. We saw this game on ABC last night. They beat Notre Dame by 33. Yeah. Number one, Georgia lost by 23. Yeah, they got crushed oh. by it looks Auburn, like right? Auburn yeah. as well. So Alabama, Miami, Oklahoma are going to be the top three in some I, I didn't know you were jumping in. Very sorry to cut you off. No, no, no. I, I, what I did want to say was we always love having you on. Thank yeah. you very much. That, that part's Thank true you. still. That, that is also true. Even Ron backs me up on that. Uh, <laughs> let's bring in Robert, though, and take a look at the forecast this morning. Hey, man, what's going on? Hey, well, let's cue the Scorpions because the Hurricanes are back down in Miami. Congratulations to them. They are going to uh, rocket up the ratings, no doubt about that. Scranton, Pennsylvania, let's turn to cold weather. It's record cold yesterday and the day before. These All these cities saw two days in a row of records, and some of these records are 100 years old, teens and 20s yesterday. Today. That Arctic air is still in place, so we may see more records fall across the Northeast, but a little bit more, a little warmer, 30 degrees in Boston, uh, but still below freezing in Newark and near or below freezing across the Great Lakes. And a little disturbance rolling across northern Iowa and through Chicago, maybe a mix of precip there. And it doesn't take much this time of year to really slick up the roads and cause some chaos this morning. So if you're heading out to Sunday morning services and activities, uh, be aware of that. Uh, no major accumulation, but again, maybe just enough to make things dangerous. That's a quick check on what's happening nationally. Weather-wise, it's time now. Have a look at your local forecast.
Temperatures on the cool side to kick things off this morning, and we should get into the upper 40s to low 50s for a daytime high. If you're heading out to the Redskins game at 1 o'clock, partly to mostly cloudy as we head into the overnight hours, a shower possible late moving.